You're listening to the Vic 757 Podcast featuring Dwight and Michael Vic talking all things tech. What's going on, everyone? We're back, Hokey Nation, for another edition of the Vic 757 Show talking all things tech. I'm your host, former all Big East conference we weren't in acc yet dwight vick along with my young cuz the icon Hosman finalist and philadelphia eagles and atlanta falcon star hokey nation mike vick is with us as well as made usual back. he's back back i made it safe back and sound. i made it back safe and sound house didn't blow down <laughs> thank god man but but uh, i just want to give you know just um just want to send my condolences to all those who was yeah. affected by the hurricane on the other side of the coast of Florida, man. So, you know, prayers going up and uh, just wishing them all the best. And I know it's a tri- triumphant time, but we'll persevere. I've been seeing the NFL and all these uh, special interest groups getting involved in, in terms of the hurricane relief efforts, and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll shake back. Yeah, man, it's, sure. uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, we couldn't do the West Virginia one because you were traveling and, you know, I was getting ready to watch the game myself. And then, we were all set. And then one of our good friends, one of our sponsors of the Hokie Way, Nick was like, hey, you need to check on your cuz. He's down in the thick of things. I was like, oh. Yeah. And I hit you up right before we set up shop to record. And your power was already going off and on. You had said the night before yeah. a tornado touchdown. It was, it was scary, spooky times. Five minutes away, yeah. like, And this is the first time I didn't take my family north. Well, we didn't just book. Usually we just, like, I'm out of here. I don't, I'm not dealing with this. And you know, we usually get away from it. And it's a it's a good break in action, get away for a minute, maybe come home, see some family. Mm-hmm. But this was the first time we was like, look, we're going to do what we got to do, hunker down, and let's get it. And uh, thankfully, we got a tornado that flipped some planes, some private planes Ooh. a couple of miles down. But mm-hmm. other than that, we we, uh, we made it through, man. We made it through. So thank God. Yeah, man. Thank God, man. I'm, I'm glad you're safe, man. So – just to recap before we join with Danny Noakes, man, I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, Shanice and Isaiah, they saw you at the West Virginia game. The the Twitter, the Hokie Nation went crazy when you went town. We got some great pictures for our Instagram account with you and Pride. You did a great job speaking to the team, and we suffered a tough loss. Then we turn around yeah. and into back in conference play, and then we take on UNC. We were 1-0 heading into conference play right. with one win against Boston College. And uh, make no mistake about it, UNC just took us to the woodshed, man. It was um, yeah, a really, really humbling yeah. loss. It was really tough, man. Fans are, are down, frustrated, kind of confused because normally since 2004, as we talked about on this show last week, Virginia Tech historically since entering the ACC has owned um, UNC um, with a few right. wins here and there by them. But technically, we have been the better program, but... <laughs> Not not last weekend, Mike. I don't know if you caught any of the yeah. game, but it was tough. I caught it, and it, it was kind of like the fashion that it happened too. It was it was not even competitive to a point where you know we kind of got tossed around. We kind of looked out of out of place. We you know guys was you know a little frustrated. Um, wasn't making the plays that they normally make or had potential to make. And I was a little frustrated, too, because they, they kind of knocked us around and smacked us around to a point where I was like, hold on, this is a little embarrassing. And yeah. the quarterback, I, I knew that this would be a challenge because their offense posed a threat to anybody in the country, really good players. But those are the type of games, like when I was talking to the team and I was telling them, you got to prepare for situations that's going to come about. Like some of the best teams is when you got to prepare a little harder. But, you know, I know they're young kids and I don't want to, you know, pretty much hop on, you know, things that, you know, I learned at a professional level, help get you to the next level. But it, it really was a case where uh, we really got outmatched and outmanned. And uh, it's, it's one of those games we just – we got to bounce back from that. We got to bounce yeah. back. Yeah. You know, I watched it, um, and, I, I mean, I knew why UNC was favored. They got a really talented quarterback. I forget the kid's name. Yeah, but he is. He, he leads talented. the ACC in touchdowns. He's one of the top passes in the nation. Um, I know UNC, a lot has been said about their defense, which has been horrendous, but Virginia right. Tech's offense has been horrendous. And, you know, 
I thought going in that, okay, despite our pedestrian look at times with the running game, with King and, and what we had, we had enough to maybe make plays. And um, I think the biggest thing going forward, Mike, is hopefully Tech, you know, led by uh, offensive coordinator Tyler Bowen can get something going where the running game can slow the game down and we can make right, some big right. plays downfield because yeah. – Otherwise, you're not going to win too many games yeah. averaging less than 20 points. And this in this in this yeah. era of football, you got to make plays. And I just I would recommend I don't like to get involved in X and O's, but my biggest thing is I just think the offense just needs to be a little bit more creative. I mean, yeah, I, I don't I don't think you have to go crazy and do a bunch of trickery, but um right now it's just we don't have the personnel to line up and just destroy a team. Yeah. Even a yep. really, really bad defense like UNC, which had come into the game at one time, they gave up 40 points in the quarter to Appalachian yeah. State. And they yep. also gave up a bunch of points to Florida AM and mm -hmm. also a lot of points to Notre Dame, which, like us, came into the game two weeks ago against UNC looking bad on offense. And Notre Dame woke up and they couldn't be stopped. So right. I, right. that's my only thing about Tech's offense. Just, you know, find a way to make plays, man. I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. And you said it because, you know, running the football and slowing the game down, it, you know, it potentially keep the other team at bay, keep the offense, their offense off the field. You can kill some clock. And, and now you're just playing like, yo, let's get tough. You know, let's get tough in between the trenches, you know, in the trenches, between the tackles. Let, let's kind of change the dynamic of the game. And it's either that or they got to get really creative. And when you get creative, you got to spend more time in, in the building. You got to spend more time trying to find these mismatches and what works because ultimately, you know, you got a lot of kids who, you know, obviously probably want to play on the next level. And most importantly, hopefully, they, you know, the goal is to graduate. But you don't want to waste their talent as well. You don't want them to start getting frustrated and getting upset and start feeling like, this isn't working and you lose the team, you lose the lock, you know, this is that, you know, we got to stay away from that. So I think, you know, the coaches right now just got to work a little harder and, and trying to find ways to make sure that we find the end zone and make these games competitive. So it's not blowouts. And then you mentioned it too. Great point. Um, you know, North Carolina gave up a lot of points on defense over the last couple of weeks. Cause you know, I'm watching teams to see how we going to fare against them down the road. So I'm like, all right, they yeah. gave up 45. Appalachian yeah. State put up some points. All right, we got a chance. And so I was real excited about this game, man. When I seen it was on at 3.30, yep. I had the late flight. And I was like, yeah, I get to catch it. And, um, you know, it just didn't go our way. But, yeah, I, I can't wait to hear what Danny got to say. And I know we'll continue to elaborate on, well, uh, on what's going on. Yeah, and I'll just add, you know, um, you know, we both um, know Pride, Coach Pride. And I know fans are getting restless because the expectation is for us, Virginia Tech, to get back. Um, to that level of what we expect, 10, 11 win game right. seasons, right. big time bowl games, big time wins. But I just want to remind everybody that supports the Vic 757 show and Hokie Nation that it's a process. Like I've talked to Pride, yeah, spent time around Pride. We, he has a plan. We Help is on the way over these next three, four years. But at the same time, these are the growing pains when you've had a lot of guys hit that exit button whether it's transferring to other schools or declare for the draft or just stop playing. So it's not like there's an abundance of talent, but with that being said, um, effort, discipline, and focus is something like you mentioned, Mike, many times you yeah. spoke to the team about this. It's something they control. You know, it's only, yeah. it's only with so much coach pride and JC price, yeah. and coach mom, they, all those guys in that building are going to get those guys ready. But yeah. they also got to show that effort and want to. You know, you stayed after. You and Andre Davis and Ricky Hall, you guys stayed after even when you were dog tired. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Y'all got some more throws in and yeah. some things like that. So, I mean, you know you know what I'm talking about, Cuz? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, man, I, I love when you bring up, you know, the stories and you, you, you reminisce because it, it always triggers something. And, and so I remember when I used to, to go to Coach Bustle and he'll give give me the concept, lay out the play. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, all right, well, if they play this coverage, then I'm going to try this. And if they play this coverage, I'm going to try that. And they might not do it, but I'm going to prepare for it. And so I remember kind of just taking the game out of his hands sometimes, respecting the play call all day. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm going to do something, Coach, that's going to make you a little bit prouder because that out we had on the backside that I just happened to hit, and you ain't think I was, we was going to get that coverage, but I hit it because they, tri- they tried to trick us. I took the game out of your hands. And, 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 and so, you know, like you say, it's not always on the coaches. It's not mm-hmm. always on the coaches, and that's what I was trying to convey to the, to the, the guys is that, you know, the coach can only coach so much. Your prep is going to ultimately lead to the victory in your heart. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's 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 major. That's major, Dwight. That, that's major because right. yeah. you, got, you got to have that focus. Yeah, Dan is getting ready to jump on in one minute, but I'll just say this too, man. You know, I know I'm done playing. I'm an OG. I sit back with my wife and kids, or you know, and watch the games, whether it's NFL or college or high school. But the one thing I remember is guys that stepped up and made plays. I remember your red shirt year. Well, you almost burned your shirt that night at Miami in the old yep. Orange Bowl. And we were in overtime. It's third and long. And it, we are tired, fatigued, it's humid. And Coach Bustle called a play. It was a pass play. I don't remember the play. But Ricky Hall told Al Clark in the huddle, hit me on this pass and let's get the F out of here. Yeah. And everybody looked at each other, ready, great. And we went there to this third down on the road. It's 20 all, tied at 20 in overtime. And damn if – Al ain't dropped back with pressure coming. I'm holding on. I'm going against Damian Lewis. Dan Morgan is blitzing. Yep. Ed Reed's in the secondary. And Ricky Hall went up and got that ball over two people. And that just personifies what you just told the team yep. a few weeks ago about Bustle gave us the play. Stein Spring told us to protect yeah. him. But, and Tony Ball told the receivers how to run their routes. But Ricky and Al made that conversation and that play in that huddle. Wow. Make sure he wow. told Al, look for me. I'm going to make it pop. So that kind of just goes to what you say about making yeah. plays, man. Like we can, yeah. coaches know they got to coach better, but at the same yeah. time, it goes back to when we were in Shell Road to really circle. Hey, you go here, you go yeah. here, I'm going to hit you. Make a play. Yep. You know? Make a play. I'm coming to you. I'm coming yeah. to you, hands down. Now, now, let me say this on yeah. another level. I Towards the end of my career in the NFL, I had the same situation. I was playing with the New York Jets. And, and let this be a story to all the people listening, all the young up-and-coming quarterbacks and it, about indecisiveness. And we talking about being decisive. And I had a play, same situation, Al, Ricky. I told the receiver in the huddle, I said, we get this coverage. I'm coming to you. Now, we down 21 nothing. Jets versus Chargers. Come off the bench. They, they relieve Geno. I, I, I'm already anticipating what's going to happen. They play the coverage. I tell them in the huddle, if they play man, I'm coming to you. I see the coverage. I recognize it. I threw a go route. And instead of hitting the guy that I told that I was going to come to, I end up throwing an incomplete pass on the go route. He was one running wide open. He would have hit, hit his head on the goal post. And we, we lost the game. And so I say to all that to say, don't be indecisive neither. Don't second mm. guess yourself. Don't second guess. Go for it. When you know you got something, you know you can you can make it happen, go make it happen. So, yeah. Love it. I love it. Give no, them balls I, and I, like that. I remember that. Yeah, no, keep it up, man. Yep. I love it. I, I enjoy that, man. And I also enjoy, like a lot of our followers and fans, Danny Noakes, when he jumps on his Noakes Noakes. D, what's the word, man? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, fellas. Hey, I want to okay. tell a story. I want to tell a story for our listeners before we jump into this. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I for this is for our listeners because both of these guys know what happened already. But I believe we got to go back to the week of the West Virginia game on okay. the Wednesday night yeah. before that we played them down in Blacksburg. And so after I get done working, you know, around five, like most people, right, like to go get a workout in. And then like most normal people, I take a shower afterward. So get out of the shower after a workout that night and my phone has blown up. I got a fa- I missed FaceTime. I've got several text messages and I'm wondering what the heck is going on because not even 10 minutes ago when I jumped into the shower, there wasn't anything happening. And so I check and the missed FaceTime is from one of my best friends, Chase, right? Chase had called me and then he had sent a video to our group message that features several of my fraternity brothers and roommates from college. And so that video shockingly featured both my friend Chase and Mike, 
who were down in Blacksburg hanging out together. And I couldn't have been more confused because, <laughs> A, I was wondering when Chase got down there to Blacksburg. And B, I was wondering, where the heck did he run into you, Mike? So right. it was really funny. And I had to apologize to Chase because I probably made yeah. him look bad. <laughs> Chase came out of nowhere. He's like, yo, you know Danny. I'm like, yeah, that's my man. He's like, yo, that's my man, too. And from there, you know, we hung out. Well, Danny, so, man, was hanging. Go ahead, Danny. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I apologize for missing the call right there. But uh, no, that's all right. I told, <laughs> I told him, I said, Danny made you look bad, bro. Danny made you look bad. <laughs> yes, yeah. I I don't think well, Danny, a lot of people. I, I, I don't think a lot of people. Video. Yeah, you I did. That video. I saw it. I was tripping off of it. <laughs> I don't. I don't think a lot of people get to miss a call from Michael Vick and then still get to talk to him again. So uh, I, I'm grateful to be. Here. <laughs> I was cool with it. But before we get going, Danny, let me read um one of our great sponsors, Hall of Fame Sports. Their promo, so they understand we how much we appreciate them. Hall of Fame Sports is the biggest show in Cooperstown, featuring all of the baseball. Hall of Famers, they do multiple events in New York and New Jersey with basketball and football's uh, biggest stars. And they bring athletes to events all over the country. Like and follow and subscribe to their social media at Hall of Fame signings and stop by the website for all future signings and updates. And if you can't make it out, I love this about them. You can send your items to them and have them sign for you. All right. So we appreciate Hall of Fame sports, man. Danny. Um, you were on last week. You held it down while Mike and his family, thank God, survived um, Hurricane Ian. Um, we're back at it this week. Unfortunately, after an even more difficult loss against the Tar Heels, a team that we own, but they owned us Saturday, man. Um, off the rip, man, what were your thoughts? Good, bad, whatever. What what you think, man? I remain optimistic despite all of what's happening with this program right now. And it's not necessarily an optimism from this season standpoint, but – knowing that Brent Pry, our new head coach, is going to need some time, several years before this team is really ready to jump back or, or even just have the conversation about where they were at towards the end, not even towards the end of the Beamer tenure, but a little bit sooner than that. Uh, and Fuente's first year competing for ACC championships is going to take time. I couldn't even single out one player if I wanted to from that game, because I think every player deserves part of the blame. I think all of the coaching staff deserves part of the blame and it's not to pile on. I think the coaching staff is still learning right now too. I think Brent Pry is still learning how to be a head coach. I think he's learning how to call a game, especially as a former defensive coordinator who still needs to be the head coach. I think Tyler Bowen, the offensive coordinator is still figuring things out because I, I look at decisions where, on fourth and one early in the game in their own territory, they don't go for it. But then I think it was back in the West Virginia game two games ago. You've got a fourth and one, and you 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 run a quarterback blast out of the shotgun, and you haven't been getting an offensive push all night. That was one of the dumbest play calls I think that you could have probably ever made. And that's an example of why I think guys like Tyler Bowen are still learning. So, yeah, it's pretty frustrating right now. But... I think it will get better, and there are still some positives to look at. We'll we'll get into those, uh, but uh, you I know. need to hear it. I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, well, he, I, go ahead, Mike. Mm -hmm. at, at what point? Um, I'm asking both of y'all. At what point do y'all think is it might be time to make a quarterback change? Do you give it one more game? Do you give it two games just to see what you got? Because I think as a team, we got to kind of go through the roster to see what we got to see who we. What we need to bring in, who we need to weave out. Uh, I'm just just curious. I, go ahead, Danny. Go ahead, Danny, because I don't. You know, this is your segment, and I, I sure. But I'll, I'll add after. Yeah, Danny. Yeah. It's a it's a great question, Mike, and it's one that everybody's having right now. You know, it from what it sounds like, they're gonna they're behind Grant Wells 100, percent and I think it okay. would take several more games of really bad quarterback play to to remove him as the permanent starter. Now, if he comes out and Pittsburgh goes up by four touchdowns in the first half and he has a lot to do with that. They'll probably pull him, but here, you know, yeah. this next stretch of games is the toughest stretch <laughs> of the season, man. It, it's only going to get a we lot harder from it. here. We did. And you know, them going up and, and I'm expecting them to get blown out by Pittsburgh. I, I really am. And it's not, uh, not a knock on them. It's not a knock on, <laughs> it's not a knock on anybody, but you, you can't, 
You can't show up at, at home on a Thursday night that's supposed to be the Terror Dome against one of your oldest rivals and, and go out and play the way Tech did and then follow it up with a stinker down in Chapel Hill and ha- expect anybody to have the faith that you're going to go on the road and win at a place that has just been impossible for this program right. to win at in, in recent years. There's, I, I, I have zero confidence that they'll win that game. Mm. But in terms of when it's time to make a, a quarterback change, I mean, they're not moving the ball well right now. I, I, if, they, if they made the change to Jason Brown to start the pit game, I would totally understand. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think wh- where this coaching staff is at, especially offensively, they know that Wells is the best they got. You know, we'll see. I, I imagine that we're going to see more of Brown here over the next couple of games because these are probably not going to be close games. We're probably going to get blown yeah. out again, and those guys are going to have to come in, and, and then we'll really see what they're made of. So, I mean, you could you could do it now if you wanted to, in, in my opinion. I don't think it'll happen. It's probably still a little bit too soon. But, yeah, you know, when you're not moving the ball – yeah. At, at, in any phase, whether it's the run game, you're 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 inaccurate. You're making bad decisions. I mean, there's there's just not a whole lot to hang your hat on right now. Right, all right. Well, you know, D- Danny and Mike, I'll just add this. Um, I agree with you, Danny, but I will say this, man. Um, I, I get what Mike's talking about because at the end of the day, man, you need to see what you have on this roster, and mm-hmm. you know, the quarterback position is always long before I played ball, gotten sometimes too much credit and too much blame because. You know, backside protection breaks down and he gets hit from behind. I was watching a game of the night. Brady and them were getting ready to make a comeback or at least make an attempt. And he got hit from the blind side. They yep. they sent the guy off the yep. edge of the corner. That's that's on him to see it, but it's also a protection type thing. So it's a two-way street between the line and the quarterback and the receiver, making sure they see the side adjust. There's so many things that go into play. However, I don't think anybody on this current team at Virginia Tech, except for maybe – a few guys have earned the benefit of the doubt, right? So that means yeah. like when when Mike had a bad game or a game where he was off before he got it going, or even if I missed a block or I messed up, when I was a junior and senior, I earned credibility where they weren't going to pull me, right? Y'all were entrenched like, starters. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. We earned that. Even when I was a backup playing some, coming in right. for the OGs ahead of me and lettering. I think right now if Grant Wells and even other guys aren't performing like they should, even for a series or two, look at the guys behind them because I just think at the end of the day, you have to have accountability. But um, from all reports, though, and I trust Pry and Bowen, I don't think it's a situation where there's like a Hendon Hooker and other guys. Remember when we had yeah. Hendon Hooker, Ryan Willis, and Quincy, you had three starters, mm-hmm. you know, one, two, and three. I don't think right. we have that kind of depth at quarterback. But I'll say this, Danny, what are your thoughts about this? And I said this to Chris Coleman. He was on. We talked about this. Um, I, I chimed in on the Tech Sideline podcast. What do you think about being more creative on offense, using Blumrick and the wild wild turkey, uh, you know, throwing on first down, um, maybe, you know, giving the ball to the guy coming around the jet sweep, um, yeah. a, halfback, a halfback toss pass, uh, you know, just some – more wrinkles. It just seems like lining, lining up in some old yeah. school sets, maybe some two back, two receiver, yeah. Yeah. under center, you know, yeah. uh, one back, three receivers, and try to, you know, find, you know, I mean, like, it, it's ways to spread teams out, but, but go ahead, man. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys are both right. And, and it's interesting because this is, I mentioned this doing my show on 1067, the fan on Saturday, which Dwight was a part of. I appreciate that, buddy. We had a good chat on college football, but. It's funny how often I find myself comparing this team to the football team in Washington, D.C., now the Commanders, because <laughs> the commanders. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's amazing how similar their issues offensively are right now from yes. several standpoints. Yes. A, yeah. offensive line play is awful, and for yeah. the Commanders, it's much worse. Virginia Tech is in a little bit better of a position there, but you have inconsistent quarterback play, guys that have rocket launchers for arms, but they're just not particularly accurate. And there's a lack of creativity on the offensive side of the ball. You could say that about both teams as well. I'm, I'm totally there with you. The difference between the big difference between those two teams would be that the commanders have Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis, way more weapons, way more talent on the offensive side of the ball. I saw somebody make the point on Twitter this week that 
the wide receivers for the Hokies are probably the most glaring talent issue on the team. They struggle to get open and they struggle right. it, to, to, to make contested catches. You know, they're, they're just, they're not making a lot of plays right now outside of, you know, when they get open and that's not very often. So yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you, you, you bring, you bring Blumrick into the wildcat or, you know, just scheme something up for Jaden blue who, who, you know, comes over this year as a transfer and my goodness, I, it just, it, it feels very vanilla. And I think the concern with the coaching staff there is probably with turning the ball over, you know, Wells is known for, for turning the ball over. He kind of had a turnover issue when he was at Marshall. So I think they're being cautious right now, but overly cautious to, to, to a fault. And, it's resulted in, in back-to-back performances where they're, they're only mustering around 10 points. And that's kind of right around where their average is for this season, shy of the Boston College yeah. game. Yeah. Well, well, you, I, I, go ahead, Cuz. No, nah, well, I was just thinking just to <laughs> kind of piggyback off what Danny was saying and you're talking about offense and, and, and Wells and being afraid of turnovers, I understand that part. But, you know, might, it might just need to, like, shorten up the passing game a little bit. You know, um, you know, they don't always have to be downfield. So when I was at the West Virginia game, real quick, Dwight, um, you're good, you're good. I was watching. I was watching both quarterbacks. I was watching Wells and I was watching the West Virginia quarterback. Now I'm not gonna make a comparison on who's better or who, but it just seemed like the quarterback from West Virginia. He just, it just seemed like he was just in control. Like, you know, it's a, it's the confidence. It's your bravado. It's like, all right, I threw an incomplete pass, but you know I'm still standing back here tall, with my head up high. Coach, give me the place in the play in. What's next? Hey, get in the huddle. Let's go. Let's go. You know, huddle up. You know, just it was more so like from Wales was kind of like going through the motions, and it's like you know it looked like you're afraid to fail. Now, oh, now you speaking? I, I, oh, I, I, yes, yeah. Yes. Now, it's like you're kind yeah. of afraid to fail, and I'm like, all right, I, I see a guy who's timid. I, I wanted to just like. Pull him to the side on the sideline, like, bro. Hey, look, man, this this this, this position is different. Like, you yo, you got to be like the most upbeat guy for, out here. Like, the, the crowd, even if y'all losing, the crowd got to still believe we gonna win because you look like you wanna you gonna find a way to bring us back. Yeah. And that's just through mannerisms and everything. And now I watch the West Virginia quarterback coming down. He boom, boom, boom. He having hmm. a good time. He having fun. I'm like, uh, even when they three and outs, he jogging off. And it's like you got to find that as a quarterback, man. You got to find that mojo, even if it's false bravado. Now I got it. Look, I'm gonna look like a. Even if I get benched, I'm gonna get benched with my head held high. And um, you know, just um, I think the coordinator and Wells got to come together, and they got to fi- fix that little synergy of confidence moving forward. Right. I want to hold on, Danny. I want to mm-hmm. say thank you for saying that. He just verbalized exactly what I've been. I, I, I'm not a quarterback, but I couldn't put my finger on it, even when the games we won so far. Right. And I don't know because that exactly describes how what I see. I just I'm not a quarterback, and what what I see as a guy that play and protect their quarterbacks is I play with some great ones, and even when Mike first got the tech, I remember beams threw him in there with the ones. And he was in there with us, and we were like, yo, Mike, speak up, man. And Mike was like, all right. Yeah, I was you know, talking all low. He was, <laughs> he was talking all low. And then after that, we were getting water. And I was like, you good? Because I was a red shirt scene. He was a red shirt. He was like, man, right. you got me here with these grown-ass men, cuz. I don't I don't know. The-. And I was like, you good? I was like, you're good. You're going to be fine. And then right. fast forward, after he got comfortable that year, they went to play for the national championship. And then the following year, every year, and then when I used to see him play in the league, I remember when I went down to Atlanta and he played the Raiders. And um, me and my wife, we were in the stands and we were watching. And Mike was, this when Mike was Mike and he and one of the guys ran the wrong route. And I watched him. He looked to the sideline and said, get him out. For real? <laughs> yeah, you did. And it wasn't a <laughs> yeah. situation where he was demeaning his teammate. It was like you knew when he walked up right. and, and got on the center and looked and looked. It, it's that... And maybe with, with Wells, Danny, maybe it's just because um, he's still getting used to Tech because he was at Marshall. Yeah. He was he was conference player, the uh, rookie of the yep. year. I mean, he's he knows how to play. Do you think he that's the game? What, what do you think? Yeah. yeah, he's he's adjusting. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I think you both hit the nail right on the head. He looks timid. He, he looks rattled. 
Um, and it, and it has everything to do with the fact that they haven't been able to consistently move the ball. You know, they, they look pretty good running the ball against both ODU and Boston college, but I mean, what did they do against West Virginia and North Carolina? Very little. And, and they dug themselves into early holes there. So the best thing, and this is something that you could say for pretty much any team, but, but with, with the Hokies, especially because they, they do have a stable of running backs that have, you know, they are talented and they might be getting Malachi Thomas back. I don't know if it'll be this week. It, it sounds like he might be a long shot for this week, but, it, but Andy, if not this Andy, week, Andy, Andy reported today that he was getting reps. He was dressed in full. Good. Go. Good. So yeah, hopefully, good. hopefully we do see him this week and we get confirmation on that officially here pretty soon. But if it's not this week, then next week, you got to figure out a way to run the ball to support Grant Wells, you know, and I, right. I talked about the tough stretch that they're going through, but, you know, also back to Mike's point about them taking some more chances. I think you have to against Pittsburgh and against Miami <laughs> and, yes. and, and against some of these teams, because you're going to be outmatched. You're, you're going to line You're going to be, you're going to line up and every single player in front of the Hokies is going to be better than them for the next couple of games, probably. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to have to take some chances or, or you're going to get beat by 42 points. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. The, you, you have, there's a, there's enough there to at least take the chances, you know, and hopefully as they all adjust the coaches as well, we, we've made that point, you know, they, they, they start to hit on a few of these because, you know, I think that might be at least the start of what it takes, right. To just see some of the success hit on one of those big passing plays. I mean, how many, what's, what's even the longest passing play of the year been for the Hokies this year? Like, right. some, yeah. no, I mean, it's, it's yeah. probably barely 20 yards. Well, Wells missed yeah. on, he missed, we talked about this, me, you, DJ Parker and Willie Powell. He missed on two big ones against West At least Virginia. Yep. And, and again, so yeah. that's why I kind of go back to Mike, who knows the position better than you and I combined True. about like timing, confidence, and just feeling like he was going to go make those plays, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll say this, Danny, um, for the fans that's watching and listening on Spotify, and this is my last question for you, and you can jump off. When you look at Pittsburgh, obviously they are better, and they always, since Narduzzi's been a head coach, are going to challenge you at the line of scrimmage. They're going to play yeah. man and get up in you, old school style. However, Pittsburgh just lost at home to Georgia Tech, a team that's been rebuilding longer than Virginia Tech. They, I mean, Georgia Tech just yeah. fired their coach. They just fired their coach two weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah. Georgia Tech is in full rebuild mode since Paul Johnson left. And we're not going to look too much ahead, but you mentioned the stretch. We have Miami coming up because this rivalry game is going to end with the new format with the ACC. We won't play them every year anymore. And Miami, yeah. uh, for the first time since 95, it won't be a night game. It won't be an evening game. It, it won't, won't even be on, be on ESPN. It won't even be on ESPN. The first wow. time since this is one of the premier rivalries, right? And Miami, one reason is because we're struggling and they got boat raced at home to Middle Tennessee State. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that when we get to Miami week. With that being said, Virginia Tech, if you want to be hopeful, what should we look for? Because Pittsburgh is beatable. I know we look like we are on Coleco Vision right now. Like, you know, <laughs> we look like we're lost. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, for the hopeful, I mean, what, what can I be hopeful for? Because Pittsburgh did just lose at home, okay? And we don't do well there, but they're not unbeatable. So what do you think? What, no. what should Tech fans be hopeful for? Well, I, th I think what, you, what, you're, what you're hopeful for is that the defense kind of reverts back to more of what we saw in the first couple of weeks, right? It, there's, there's never, it's ne with this team, it's never going to change that the defense is going to have to carry the day, right? And... <laughs> That was that was even true against North Carolina, a team that you knew was going to put up a lot of points, but you were going to have to get timely stops to win that game. And they did not And they didn't move the ball offensively. And then it ended the way that it did. But what with Pittsburgh, I think what what Georgia Tech did last week is they they stymied their ability to run the ball. They Pittsburgh has prided itself yep. under Narduzzi on being able to run the football. I remember, you know, right when when he got there, they had James Conner. Uh, yeah. They they also had a, another NFL running back, and and now they've got this guy Abana Kanda, who is is maybe the best running back in the ACC right now. And you know if if you let him get going, you let him run wild, it's going to be a long day because Slovis, yeah. their quarterback, is also a very good player, and he's just going to have all day to sit back there and pick the defensive yeah. part. So stopping the run, I would say, is the is the is the place to start for where Tech can pull off this two touchdown upset 
on on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, well, so, Pittsburgh was favored to get twenty two over Georgia Tech. They were favored by more. So yeah, and again, and again just, Georgia, anything can happen. Georgia Tech is one of the few teams that I I feel pretty confident that we could beat right now, and and maybe not now with the confidence that they have after beating Pittsburgh. But they got a pretty good quarterback. They do. Yeah. They do. I like and, him. And I like him. I just I think it starts with with stopping them from running the football and being able to run the football yourself, you know, control the clock because they're never really going to be able to outscore anybody in, in a season yeah. like this. Yeah. Well, Danny, we appreciate you coming on as always with your notes, notes segment, man, always insightful and always helpful. Whether you think we got it or not, we'll see this weekend. Um, yeah, what time is the game for tech fans? We're playing um, 3.30, 3.30. What channel is the yep. game on, you know? Uh, I do not know. I can check here real quick there for you, though. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know it's three thirty. Um, so again, another three thirty kickoff. Uh, we're ACC one and one. Network. Get it. ACC Network. All right, Danny. Yeah. We appreciate you, man. Be All right, safe y'all. Out here Thanks, Danny. Good yeah. You. Thank you, Mike. Glad All you're right. back, man. Glad you're safe from the hurricane. Thank I'll talk to you more soon. Yep, yep. You got it. So. See y'all. All right, man. That's our guy, Danny Noakes from one hundred six seven. The fan jumping on, man. So we'll see what we got, man. Um. Pittsburgh is going to be a challenge, man, but we'll see. Um, I forgot they had Slovis, that quarterback. Yeah, 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 man. You know, um, we got some work to do, man, but we're going to move on, man. And, you know, welcome to our our, um, our guests, our two guests jumping on here, man, on the Vic 757 show. We went back to back in the day, man, to get some some real real guys that started the program. OG. To to some OGs to us. (laughs) To us, man. Uh, welcome joining us on the uh Vic 757 show. Our uh, hokey guests are two great, great, great players, John <laughs> Jeffries and Vaughn Hebron. All right, we got two of the best in here, man. Gentlemen, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Yeah, baby, how you doing? Oh man, it's an honor up, to have baby? you both on. What's up, Mike? How you doing, good. baby? What's up, baby? Good to see you, man. Good to see, see you, Vaughn. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, you're looking up, good, John? man. Y'all looking good, baby. Uh, that's John. John a pretty, you know, he, he always been pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, John, man, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. You can't see him? I mean, I Mike. can see him. I'm he has looking in the background. Oh, yeah. on the background? Yeah, what is that, John? Where you at? John yeah, faking like he was getting it in. <laughs> Where you at, John? Yeah. Can you hear us, John? John? Your sound is off a little bit. You good? Yeah, up in Tanzania. Huh? Okay, nice, uh-huh. nice. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. what's up. <laughs> yeah, nice. So it's good, nighttime. Good, good. I'm coming out the head. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Appreciate okay. you jumping on, man. Well, you know, uh-huh. man, um, for those listening on Spotify, y'all can't see it, but these guys, you know, everyone talks about the 93 team and the 95 team, but these are two of the best to ever do it. Vaughn, I used to use on the video game, okay? We talking yeah. about... Oh, a Super Bowl champion, okay, my record holder. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, what's up, man. Baby? How you doing, man? <laughs> now, yeah. now you, now you make me feel old. You date me. <laughs> nah, man. You look great. You look great. And before I read this um sponsor, because this segment is sponsored by a newest sponsor that joined this hokey way. Before I read okay. that, Vaughn, um, congratulations to you, man. I, I, I follow your your journey um with your daughter, I believe, oh, on Facebook. Yeah, Let everybody know what's going on with her, man. I see all the. The college stuff. What is what is, uh, what is she an athlete yeah. too, right? Yeah, she a little yeah, piece. yeah. She, uh, she um at Miami now. Um, she uh she's gonna be running the four hundred hurdles, the four, the two, and the sixty hurdles. So yeah, she right. uh freshman year. She's uh now practicing during the summer. She's uh she's acclimating pretty well, and uh, hopefully uh nothing but good things in in ahead of her. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. University man. of Miami? Yeah, Vic. Yeah. All right, no doubt. You know, we family. So if you need me to roll down there and put one of the little homies in the headlock, that's what know. I'm talking about. That's let what I'm know. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I hey, you can't have enough of them. Cannot Absolutely. have enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. well, let me let me uh let me shout out Hokey Way real quick. Then we're gonna jump into it, man. Hokey Way is uh one of our new sponsors, is an independent nonprofit organization that will create active engagement for Virginia Tech student athletes with charitable goals that will also help with the NIL. The Virginia Tech student athletes who wish to use their names, image, and likeness to advance the work of charitable organizations will align themselves with the Hokie Way 
And they will also be a partner and sponsor of the Vic 757 show moving forward. So shout out to our guys at the Commonwealth NIL in the Hokie way. So they will be now sponsoring our Hokie player, former player and current player segment. So John, Vaughn, we got Hokie trivia coming up here shortly. And we also end the show with Hokie shout outs. But before we jump into that, I always try to do my due diligence and research some stuff. And I was just looking at stuff, man. You know, I, I, I saw both you guys play. Um, and then, of course, when I got to tech, you learn more about it. You see whose names on the record books and things like that. Um, John, I, I didn't notice about you. And I remember you used to come back to tech. Your first kickoff return in 87, Beamer's first year, was for a touchdown? To the house? To yeah. the house, John, was? <laughs> yeah. Who was that? Who yeah. I should have been using a trivia question. Who, um, who, who yeah. was that against? Who was that against, man? What do you remember <laughs> about that? That was against Clemson. They were ranked five, number five. The nation. Yeah. Yeah, were you nervous? Was a... No. No. Okay. no. Not at all. Um, all just right. one of those where you, you dream about it, you think about it, and then it happens. But I did the same yeah. thing in my year in college. And, uh, it, you know, it was great. It was a good experience, I'll tell you that. But uh, that year was a rough year. <laughs> <laughs> Always be oh <laughs> hey, hey let me let me say something real quick, man. John yeah. John was my mentor. Uh I literally right. I I for me, I'm uh hey John will tell you very competitive. So I came in, everybody, it's so funny. We when we do reunions, cats were like V, I couldn't stand you. And I it wasn't right. I showed everybody love, but at the same time, Vic, I was there to play, right? Right. And so my first I come in. And I'm sizing John up because I know John's starting. I'm sizing him up. And I want to, like, you know, it's me against him. But John, I'm, he, his soul, man, I'm telling you, when you're talking about good people, hmm. that's John. He's good people. Like, yeah. I couldn't – I'm sitting there trying to be mad at him. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. That, I a competitive man. Yeah, I could not be that with him. As John, yeah. he will give you the shirt off his back. He uh, never once did he not try to teach me, take me under his wing, and I just want to let you know I always appreciate that, John. Seriously, man, that's the that's 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 the hokey way. That's the hokey way. Let me chime in real quick and ask a question, get it out the way, because I'm always curious about the quarterbacks that you know the, the guys, the former guys played with. So tell me who was the quarterbacks in y'all day and who played. I probably should have did my research, but I wanted oh, to hear from y'all and. and, and the quarterbacks that y'all played with, what, how did y'all feel about them, and, and were they uh, good players in your eyes? Oh, John, you want to take it with me? It's, it's up to you. I, I could th- like when I came in, it was Will Fuhrer. Right. He was. Okay. Uh, he had an arm. Will Will made it to the league. I don't know how mm-hmm. many years he played, but Will could throw that pill. Um, he was good people, you know. Will, yeah. it, you know, it, it, it. He was a guy that, uh, you know, he was straight laced. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. once you got to know him, uh, to know him is to love him. He was uh he was a ball, he was throwing that run. Pretty good. Um our, our offense at that he played time played for the best. Huh? Yeah, he played for the best. Gotcha. Our offense yeah. at that time was so uh, could have had a little more creativity. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, uh, it was run based. But yeah, you know what I mean? And we were just starting. Uh, you know, it was kind of we, we were just coming into our own as a program. Right. But, right. uh, you know, I thought he did the best he possibly could. And I had uh, the Shazo, uh, I think, okay. my junior senior year. Right. Maurice. And Maurice was – he was a talent. Again, he was kind of ahead of his time. Vic meaning yes, yes. He, yes. he was a guy that can run. Yes. He can yeah. throw that pill. Um, they didn't quite know what to do with him. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? We were doing option. and all, Like, they didn't really allow him. Right to be all he could be, but he was uh, right. he was special talent as well. Yeah, how about you, John? I will tell you. So I had Eric Chapman, okay. um, who during his fifth year, so he went to Dematha like I did, um, but five years you know ahead of me. But I have to be blessed to be able to play with him, um, and he was amazing. Let me just explain something, Dwight. I know you guys were in the Hokey. You know, the best years of, of, of Hokey, you know, being a Hokey, it was a little different in 1987. <laughs> okay. And um, we had, so I play, when I played, I had no offensive coordinator. Okay. We didn't have offensive coordinator in 1987 and 1988. Oh. 
Jeez. Our schedule was top 10. So we had, we played. So imagine playing tailback or even quarterback without an offensive coordinator. Wow. Yeah. So, so you know, there was, we had the number two defense in 1988. So the quarterback had a lot of pressure on them. Okay. Mm. So there were plays that Eric Chapman made that weren't even on the scripts. The coaches didn't know what he was doing that he scored a touchdown on, just improvised. Wow. Yeah. So, and Will started without an offensive coordinator. You know, that's mm-hmm. a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. Wow. Yeah. So it's yeah. so they were scrambling. Budget was budget was crazy. They were trying to figure out what they wanted to do. They didn't. You know, it was not. Well, yeah, y'all, we was we were still in Converse. We were still yeah. in Converse. Had the short boots. Yeah. Yeah, the booty shorts. <laughs> the, the hypest we were that year we played UVA, we we spray painted our <laughs> our cleats and our yeah. Converse cleats. You couldn't tell us nothing. Melendez <laughs> Bird told me that story. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. Cool. Wow, that's man, that's some cool stories, man. Yeah, appreciate I, you. I tell you though, I, I will tell y'all about but Vic, y'all for me, you know, it's it's one thing, you know, you're in the league, you're doing your thing. And you, you look back at school, and I, I had some obviously fond years and fond memories, but y'all made it fun and y'all made me a fan again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, yeah. I was proud to say, yeah, I went to tech because of y'all. I mean, literally, right. I, you know, y'all again, y'all took it to the next level as far as people. As I, I remember when I was going to tech, you the minute you say you shape your lips to say V, everybody like <laughs> Virginia. Nope. Yeah, you know I mean? it, it wasn't no yeah. V Tech. I'm telling yeah. you, you say V Tech, yeah. people are like, huh? Where's V Tech? You talking about Virginia? No, V Tech. Now, right about that. You shape your lips to say Virginia. They V Tech, and that's yeah. You know, and again, y'all, y'all definitely did that. Seriously, that's really. Let me crazy. let me just say this, Vaughn and John. I want. I'm glad you said this. I, me and Mike were part of the Beamer document. They just they just aired last night, and it's so funny. I was telling my son. They don't show everything because I was in the joint. I was in Blacksburg up in Lane Stadium for an hour and a half, but they only showed like bits and pieces. But I've gone out my way to mention both of you and the boat rights and all you guys because I'm four years older than Mike. So when Mike got there, we were there basically two years together, his red shirt year. And then when I came back after I got cut, I was there helping out a little bit. But I remember what you did. And I saw you guys play, not just you you guys when you played Vaughn in the league and John when you guys played together at Tech, but I came back and I watched and I and I realized even my recruiting visit, they used to show us what you guys did. So I want to say thank you. I appreciate it because, you know, yeah. Vaughn, you turned down, you turned down, I'm looking at your stuff right now. You turned down some schools to come to Tech. You turned down oh, yeah. Miami, Colorado. Oh, yeah. That's when Colorado had the black oh, cleats oh, yeah. and they yeah. were nice. Yeah, I end up playing they, with a bunch yeah. of them players. Yeah, it's it kind of crazy, man. Where and and Vic, I'm sure you familiar with this. Where and John, when you get recruited, you know it's that it's it's almost like uh, AAU now, where you see the 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 guys that they play when they're young and they playing in pros. Well, on my recruiting trip, I can't tell you how many cats was on that Miami recruiting trip that played with me in the league. You know, what I mean, yeah. how many guys was in that Colorado trip playing with in the league? It's just it's funny because you start to follow them. You recognize a certain name. And I, right. I, I can tell you, so it, it, it's pretty cool. It becomes that little union. You know what I mean? But yeah. I, I tech for some reason, I'm going to tell you the craziest story real quick. I know we got a short time. But when I went to Miami, when I started the recruiting process in 88, you, who didn't want to be a Miami Hurricane? That, that was, I'm, I was, so everything else was basically to take a trip. I've never been on a plane before. Right. So my first trip was to Illinois. That it was crazy. But I it was just basically to travel because I right. knew I was going to be a hurricane. But you start to learn some things about yourself, what to look for. And B-Tech, for some reason, man, it got to me. And I'm sitting there. I remember, you know, how like every Sunday they, when you're about to fly out, they bring you into the office and they basically tell you they either offer you or tell you where you right. are in the slot. Coach Johnson, off of me. And that's all I ever want. That's the dream, y'all. And I'm sitting there. It was like out-of-body experience. He's sitting there telling me, we want you. And I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm seeing myself say, Coach, can you give me a week to make this decision? 
And he it it's he was like, he said, okay, I, I'll give you a week, but understand we got to move on after a week. And I'm like, I understand right. that, coach. Because I lied to him and told him I had to talk to my aunt. It was my decision, but I, yeah. I, I just I couldn't understand why I wasn't jumping at it, but it was V Tech that I was thinking about. Now, this is the crazy part. That Tuesday, that Tuesday after I left, that's when um they announced that Jimmy Johnson was going to my uh going to uh Dallas. Mm, he so, was leaving. Yes, he was leaving. Something and it, and it made it it made the decision easy for me. Easy, it worked out. Tech. But that's crazy how that worked out. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. But it was something about tech, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm, I'm are you crazy? Like nobody even yeah. knows tech. Miami just offered you. What is wrong with you? But it was uh, it was something about it, man. And obviously, it was a place for me. Yeah. <laughs> what about yeah. you, John? I, yeah, I was gonna say, John. What about you? John, you, your, your sound went off again. It went off again. Is it better now? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we got you. I have the Indian Ocean behind me. So, so check this out. So they brought Vaughn by my, they brought Vaughn by my, uh, by my place. And so Vaughn had on a trench coat. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> trench coat was down to his ankles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> As a Baltimore day, yo. <laughs> <laughs> was from shoulders to ankles, okay? And oh. I remember, the one thing I remember was the way he blinked when he said, I just got back from Colorado, you know. I was like, okay, all right, okay, I'm, I'm impressed, <laughs> right? But that was, he was one of the people that was always brought past our house and our place because we recruited on our own dime back then. That's true, yo. That's true. So, so we had, they had to bring the, so all the guys were cheap. They bring them by our place. They brought him by our suite. And every year we had a house over in Oak Manor, my parents had. And we 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 were we had parties, we had we had discussions, we had myself and John Granby in particular. We were like like 25 and 0. So whoever came by, we were just like take, checking them off. So everybody, Melinda's yeah. bird, you name we were we were knocking them out. Um the coaches weren't talking to us about it. They weren't saying, hey, you got to get these players. We just made a decision out of love that we needed to get, you know, the best players that we could possibly get. And, um, you know, that was really tough considering, you know, going to place. I mean, I went to a number of places myself, but, you know, there's a lot of love in Blacksburg. I'm sure you guys felt it when you guys came on your visit. And uh, it was just a big, really big thing. But Vaughn was, was a, you know, first of all, I wanted as many good backs in the room as, as possible. You know, this, I played one of my best friends in high school was a great running back and uh, capable of being all American and everything else. And we rotated around and, and we managed to get a lot of, a lot of honors as well. So, you know, I never worried about having, having, you know, good players in the world, especially if you're confident, right? If you're confident, you don't have right. to think about that stuff, right? And I, and I, yeah, y'all had it. Nice, y'all had yeah. it. Yeah. It was but hold it, on, Tony. I mean, uh, Tony, uh, John. You mentioned Dematha, and you mentioned great backs. That's why I said Tony, because the one person like John, you always show love. You know, I haven't been around Vaughn like Mike. I saw Vaughn ball from afar, but the one guy I've been around in person in Baltimore and Virginia Beach, the Blacksburg, is Tony Kennedy, and he <laughs> always reminds me how great he was. And you know, I grew up in you know seven five seven yeah. guys. Seven That's five Tony. seven. We got a lot of this tie water. We got confidence, but it wasn't until I met Tony that I moved up here to Northern Virginia to DMV, living up here. Met the Demathe guys, and you Demathe guys, especially Tony, is the most confident person. Vaughn had the swag, but Tony will tell you he oh. writing about everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's to yeah. that's. To Tony the Tiger said from day one. That's oh, that's no, no, the, the Tony the dynamic. That dynamic, oh. you guys just be around to see it. But Tony, yeah, we butt heads all the time. That's all we did. It's <laughs> on the fly. You name it, all the time. Um, you know, for me, I was pretty much put out the pasture when these young men, uh, you know, after I got hurt and everything else. But these guys, 
um, you know, just watching the dynamics and just keeping them to get along <laughs> was, I mean, it was slightly a little edge there, slightly a little was, edge. It was a lot of edge. Don't be, don't, hey, look. Hey, hey, but, you know, don't I bet. <laughs> but Tony went to, Tony went to Bladensburg, um, which was, which he arguably could have been gone to DeMatha. You know, Phil Bryant was in the backfield um, with me at DeMatha. Um who was a grown man. We always tried to pride ourselves because when we came from DeMatha, we felt like we were grown men on the field, um, could block, you know, can do, try to do everything. So we just, you know, we had some real good coaching, some hard-nosed coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm telling you right now, Vaughn, let me just tell you, let me just brag about him a little bit. So Vaughn, I got some ugly pictures <laughs> I'm on running in his equipment. Okay. So, <laughs> so, you know, back, you know, today I'm really envious of running backs because they can wear those shoulder pads that fit the shoulders real nice. And yeah, real, yeah. Yeah. Look at me. Nice and neat. Uh -huh. so you got me with big shoulders. I got Herschel Walker size shoulders. <laughs> you know, Vaughn, they, they, they Vaughn. Vaughn was 160 pounds. He still he got back down to 660, but he was 160 pounds of fire, fire. Um, when he came and played, he was all out. He was with me on every sprint, and 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 you name it. If he was any kind of drill, he was all out. 100. Like the effort, that's what you put past your children. The effort. That's, that's all that I know. That's all I know. It was amazing. Kids. Aggression. But you were, I mean, you're like this big, but hey, you're aggression. My first year, I literally, I'm, I'm telling you, after training camp, I was 153 pounds. Wow. 153 pounds. Wow. And running back. <laughs> and yeah. running back. You don't want to have any pictures of on. Of that time, I thank God that they don't have it on, on any magazines <laughs> because I have a lot of them. I have eight by tens of you, and <laughs> I said, if he wants to join the archives, I got oh, him. man, I got cool. him, but I think go ahead, go ahead, I think John, go ahead, finish Lance your plane. I couldn't you know, hear you. Go ahead, yeah. No, what I was just saying is that, um, you know, just being in the backfield, Coach Height and other people, um, that were there, um. You know, it was, they the other guys don't realize it, but they didn't know that we had didn't have an offensive coordinator. We didn't have a scheme. I did not know that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it, that's the truth, man. It's the truth. Yeah. yeah so our offensive had, line coach, yeah. he called plays, but he wasn't no offensive coordinator. It was. I'm telling you, it was. Uh, and, 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 and the one thing, and the one thing about y'all, and I've said this on, you know, I'm all I'm on radio. I do a lot of stuff, man. Virginia Tech sports, football specifically. The one thing people don't realize is. And this is why I want to lead into this last question before we jump in Toki trivia. Vaughn and John, you guys were there before me and Mike got there. So y'all were there in Beamer's early years where, you know, he was hanging on by a thread. And, and on top oh. of that, oh, yes. on top of that, y'all played for four, the first four years, either the hardest or top five toughest schedule oh. in the nation. Y'all were playing wow. at Oklahoma, remember, at Florida State. Y'all were playing because y'all were independent. Oh, back to back. We had, yes. we had, remember that year, John, we sold like three of our games? We was like yes. HBCU. <laughs> we were literally selling our home games. For so real? we literally went to Oklahoma, mm -hmm. NC State, South mm -hmm. Carolina. I'm, I'm talking about back to back to back. We wasn't home for five straight weeks. So Vaughn, right. hold on. Wow. Vaughn, 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 John, I want to ask this question, and we're going to jump into the trivia because we got to keep us on schedule. I want to ask you this, and then, John, you can go next. Because of that experience and insight you both have, because I can't – when I say I helped build, I say I helped build, but you guys, you, you Tony, all y'all, Wilford, y'all set the tone because a lot of y'all could have went to Colorado and Miami. So with that being said, with Brent Pry there now, Hokey Nation's restless because Fuente's gone, not because he's gone, but because we're starting over. Yeah, we yeah we know we, we how we feel about him being gone. Yeah, but yeah, with that yeah. being said, you and John were, start, you were part of the building, getting the buzz going. And then when Cornell Brown and Antonio Banks came in, yeah. you know, the lean years, we were off probation. We had a full amount of scholarships. Uh, Vaughn, you go first. What is Brent Pry got to keep doing to keep the locker room, to keep the recruits interested? Because you chose Tech over some dogs and he's gonna have to get these guys in virginia to do the same thing in maryland and dc 
So what does he got to do? I know you're not a head coach, but just you part well, of building the program. I mean, I'm gonna tell you the biggest thing, right? And, I, and I'm sure y'all can vouch for this. What we started, yes, we might not have been the five stars. We were literally built our program, and even with Vic, we Vic, obviously you became a five star. But when you came yeah. out, you wasn't a five star. I was not. Well, you was you not. believe that you're a five star, but I'm talking about what they rate. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And I and John, you believe you're a five star. I know I believe I was a five star. But my yep. point is, what we were rated, the program was built off of three stars that became five stars at the program. Blue collar family and yo nobody wanted to fight us you know what i mean like we literally went, <laughs> and, I, I, and look we went into every place we didn't you know we wasn't ducking from nobody i don't care yeah. what like what was said what was written you couldn't tell us nothing you couldn't tell us yeah. nothing and y'all i could tell the way y'all carried yourself it was the same thing now the beauty about it even when we started having some success the program was still carried that way. It was still blue right. cop. It was still, okay, uh, somehow y'all still were like underdogs. And I, I think we've lost that. You know what I mean? Yep. We trying to outwit people instead of, we was, we was always talking about if nothing else, we're going to be more physical. That was from day one. And I, we lost that with the boy. What's the boy name? Fuente? Fuente, Fuente. Because I couldn't... Yep. And so when you say, oh, V, why you ain't got that gear? I had that gear when y'all was playing. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you know right. I mean? I, my guy was talking to my make sure they right. get some gear. I'm telling you, like some of my clients hit me up like, you watching Tech today? I'm like, man, I ain't watching that because I, I, I get mad. I get mad. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it lost its heart because I don't care that if they're losing. It's how you lose. Yes. It's how yep. you lose. Yep. And, I, mm -hmm. and that's the problem I got. So how do you get back to that? That's what you need. You you need yeah. you need that dog, man. And we we kind of lost that dog. Yeah, I agree. I just wanted to hear you say it because sure. you I know John, you by the comment, but I saw what y'all did. I saw what y'all did when I got there. I remember we called them the Lester Specials. The running backs, quarterbacks, and linemen all had the same black shoes. Mike had the same shoes <laughs> I had. You know what I'm saying? Then we got the contract with Nike. Then we got you know by the time I left, things got better. New locker yeah. room. But if yeah. you guys didn't come in 87, 88, 89, and 90, then we don't have that because Bima may not last. And Dave Brain was patient, yeah. and you guys set the tone because the one thing I remember in Bobby Bowden's book, his book is autobiography. He mentioned Virginia Tech they as the toughest team. He yeah. said they are the toughest team I have to coach against every year. Not Miami. He said Virginia Tech, Bobby Bowden. So, John, what are your thoughts on um, my point, my question about – what pride and his staff had to do to get back that mental and physical toughness and just winning games. Just forgive me, but I try to stay out of the fray with opinions on this, but I'm going to give you my opinion. <laughs> they, because a lot of the alumni were isolated from, from being part of the, the recruiting process. Um, even recommendations that could have, that the players have gone elsewhere um, that in Durham Beamer's time, um, especially that they were negating and just going for the the rating type of thing. So if this person is not rating, they lost the battle of D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. They got to get it. Yeah, they got to win. That's um, you know, yeah. I know I played in that in that system, and if they don't own it, and see, you guys may not remember, but but back in the day, the ACC was bigger than anything. Okay, it was big as anything. Yep, exactly. Yep. Jim Maryland was crazy. Okay, they had, the, uh, you know, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, NC State. They were huge. They were that. They were getting all of the talent. They had Boomer Sias and you name it. Frank, you know, Frank Reich. All these people. They they had playing, and uh, we were they were kicking behind. So they, he has to win the battle of DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And pipe into the alumni that are strong there. Um, Beamer and those. Guys, they had a they had an issue that you guys don't really. It's not really recognized as what they had Dooley before him, and Dooley was they won the Peach Bowl, and we had four years of guys that were on our team, mm. and they didn't necessarily like Beamer, and um, because Beamer's style is different, you know, it wasn't you know everybody wasn't followers in that in that program, and so we had a lot of people that all of us younger. I started as a true freshman. 
and and I'm you know I'm, I'm that's who I sat and listened to, you know, was the older guys that were not they called it the old school. That was the old school. You guys are still this new stuff. You know it. So there was a lot of undermining that was going on, and not people to truly convince. Everybody played their heart out, but that's what you know. Fry has to you know Coach Fry has to get those guys on board. They were on his program. And then win the battle of BC, Maryland, Virginia. Got to got to own own uh you know uh the peninsula. Got to own yeah. Got to own uh Virginia Beach. You know, got to own South Side. I think you hit it on. I think you hit it on the nose, John. He he has to start reaching back. Like Coach Beamer, he always had a connection with us. You know what I mean? Coach, call us man, so. when you coming down. I mean, we, yeah. no reach out, no reach yeah. out, no connection. It's no connection. Right. I, it, I don't, it's, it's like, I don't even know. I don't know anybody there anymore. Well, the one thing I'll tell you about this, because Mike was back, I've been back, and they definitely are going to be reaching back out. They've already started. You just got to yep. get, there's a lot of stuff that they're trying to fix that was undone. I mean, you know, because there was, yep. it wasn't just you, Vaughn. It was Antonio Freeman. It was me. It was everybody. It was DJ Parker. It was anybody and everybody. But I will say this, Pry, if you talk to them, you can text them. And um, those coaches, Many of them are former players, so they okay. they're going to have they're going to have a lot more stuff. They watch this show, they watch this podcast, and they also they definitely want us back. There's they they want us back as much as possible. It's just when you take over a situation like they did, there were a lot of guys that felt like you and John, including myself. Um, but I think you know, just talking to Coach Pry, who was there three years with me as a grad assistant, and then him being back. They have actually recruiting staff and player engagement staff that are trying to get everybody's phone numbers and emails. They're giving a space now for tailgates. There's a ticket system. Guys are invited on the sidelines. So it's how it used to be, and it's going to be even better. I can I can definitely speak on that. And Mike was just there. So he was there with Andre Kendrick and a ton of former players from the 90s and the 80s and even the early 2000s. And they, and they want that. And he okay. wants that. You know, so... But I love your insight, man, because I respect you both, man. It's true, true gems and OGs, man. So with that being said, we're going to test your hokey knowledge. This is the favorite part of the segment. <laughs> this is Hokey Trivia, sponsored by Alexandra Restaurant Partners, man. Um, let me read this promo real quick to our proud sponsors, man. Alexandra Restaurant Partners was formed to manage three restaurants, these restaurants in Orlando and the Northern Virginia, D.C. area, to include Touchdown Wings and Burgers, Bear Pier and Wine Bar, High Tide Lounge and several others in Alexandria, Orlando, formed to build an exceptional leadership team that includes some of the best talent and sharpest minds in the industry. They were built with one goal in mind to be the best in the nation and not just the biggest, but by achieving operational excellence, leading with integrity and being transparent. So if you're in these areas, man, you want a great meal, you want to learn about career opportunities as well as private events, parties and catering. Sign up for offers and promos at alexandriarestaurantpartners.com. So, gentlemen, thank you to Alexandria Restaurant Partners. Now, I do the Hokie Trivia. I ask you guys three questions, I mean, four questions. Just so you know, only a handful of people have gotten three out of four to include Chris Ellis, Cornell Brown, and just a few other people. Nobody has gotten four out of four. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know about John, but I think you're still safe with that. <laughs> And, um, you know, again, this is Hokie Trivia. All right, so here we go. Uh, John, I'm going to start with you first, and um, we'll see what you go, and then I'll go um, Vaughn and then Mike. Um, John, which Virginia Tech running back is the all-time leader in rushing attempts with 843 carries? This is the all-time leader with the 80. Uh, so 843. Is it A, Dwayne Thomas? Just wait, wait till I finish. A, Dwayne Thomas. Dog. B, B, Tony Kennedy, C, Cyrus Lawrence, or D, Kevin Jones? Okay. <laughs> What'd you say, John? So Kevin Jones played for like one year, went pro, and then uh, um, definitely Tony. Tony split carries with Vaughn, so not yeah, enough carries, yeah. period. They didn't get enough carries anyway. Um, it's got to be Cyrus Lawrence. It's Cyrus Lawrence, period. So I'm, I don't normally do this, but just for the other two, Kevin Kevin Jones didn't play one year. I, I know what you mean. He split time with Lee Sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm being facetious. Yeah. Being oh, okay. I, got, I, I can't. Yeah, okay. I can't really say um, he won't that nice to go one and done. Um, <laughs> no, he, um, was, he, 
was he had, he was with, with Lisa. I, I follow the backs. Yeah, I know, know I know. That's why that's why I got the trivia with the backs. All right, Vaughn. <laughs> uh who you have? Uh is it D Thomas? I got Tony. I, I agree, I agree with John. All right. Sorry. All right. And I agree, I agree with them. Rest in peace. All right, yes. Rest in peace to the great Cyrus Lawrence, who just passed away. We shot him on the Instagram, and he is the correct answer with 843 carries. However, wow. ran however ran yeah, man. However, second all time is Kevin Jones. I, wow. I ran him in the yeah. ground. Yeah, he got yeah. that rock a lot. He got the rock yeah. a lot. That's yeah. why I looked at John for a second, but I was like, oh, I don't want to give off a facial reaction. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you know why? Do you know why? Because that's what everybody expected anyway, you know. Well, even when Coach Hyde got him and how he was like, 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 uh, um, mouth was watering over the fact that he had Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Jones. I, I had to make I, a call. I, I had to make one of the calls. <laughs> yeah. It's, you, know, you need to call this boy. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, shoot. You mean you y'all were dogs, Ron? You was a dog, man. Super Bowl champion out there running, and you played with an attitude like somebody took your cash app money. You always uh, played. Sweet. He would he would run the ball and then talk trash <laughs> to the guys tackling him, man. Oh yeah. That's all right, man. You guys all one for one. All right, here we go. Um, Vaughn, I'm gonna start with you. Which Virginia Tech punter holds the record? With a career punting average of forty three point five yards, this is all time. Um, forty three point five all time. Is it A. Vinny Burns, B. David Cox, C. Jimmy Kibble, or D. Oscar Bradbury? Kimble. Jimmy Kibble. You are going with Kimble. Kibble. Um, John, you need me to read the answers again? Yes, please. This Virginia Tech punter holds the all-time career punting average with 43.5 yards per punt. Is it A, Vinny Burns, B, David Cox, C, Jimmy Kibble, or D, Oscar Bradburn? I'll say B. You're saying B, David Cox, all right? All I'm right. going to say A, Burns. It was Burns. All right. All of you named some great punters, but the correct answer is Oscar Bradburn who uh, played 2017 to 2020. He was Australian. He was during the Fuente era. You probably don't knew it, know it because, Vaughn, uh, you weren't watching. Yeah, I wasn't. Vaughn was like, nah, he was boycotting. Yeah, yeah. so it was Oscar. Yeah, he – but to y'all to y'all point, Vinny, Vinny, David, and also Jimmy are all on there. They just Pretty not good. all the time. Yeah. They, Jimmy, Yeah, I mean, that top ten list has got – they all got 40. It's like they separated by a decimal uh. or two. Yeah, all right. So you guys got your first one wrong. All right, still got a chance for two more. Here we go. Um, John, I'm going to go back to you. Um, which opponent has VT played the most? This is the most common opponent they played in bowl games. So they played this team the most in all the bowl games that Virginia Tech has been in. Is it A, Cincinnati, B, Florida, C, Tennessee, or D, Florida State? Ooh. First one, Cincinnati. Ooh. A. All right. Good call, John. Vaughn, who you got? Say, read them again, please. Okay, here we go. Which opponent has Virginia Tech faced the most in postseason play as far as bowl games are concerned? They played this team the most. Cincinnati, Florida, Tennessee, or Florida State? Man, uh, I know it's between Tennessee and Cincinnati. Ugh. Uh. I think I'm gonna go with John because I think it is Cincinnati. I think it's Cincinnati. Okay. All right. And Mike, because who you got? Tennessee. Tennessee. All right. So the correct answer is A, Cincinnati. <laughs> Virginia Tech it. played them in 1974 in the Sun Bowl, 2009 the Orange Bowl, 2014 and 2018 in the Military Bowl. They played them four times. So um, they had a winning streak against them until the military bowl in 2018, where they lost in that up in uh, up in Maryland, up in Annapolis. So I didn't realize they had played yeah. Cincinnati so much. I thought it was uh, Tennessee or Florida State because we played. Yeah, Florida I didn't State know it was four, 20. but I definitely I knew it a three. I knew it a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys, let's finish strong as Gentry used to say. Last one. All right, Vaughn, I'm gonna start with you. Coach Beamer retired. <laughs> I mean Vaughn's face. Coach Beamer retired. <laughs> And from coaching in 2015, 
during his time as head coach of Virginia Tech Hokies, how many conference championships did he win between the Big East and ACC? So it's just so I'm not going to do the whole. In the, this is yeah. all the conference championships, okay? That's a big number. Not, and this big is number. this is remember this conference, not championship that combines conference championships, or if they didn't have a conference championship game. All right, is it a eight, b seven? C six or D nine conference championships. Frank Beeman. I say eight. All right. Vaughn's going with eight. Say B seven. Mike, you saying what you say B? All right, Mike said B. All right. And what you got, John? B. 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 Which one? B. B. All right. B. All right, the correct answer is seven, B. Okay. He won three with the Big yeah. East and four with the ACC. Wow. So shout out to Frank nice. Beamer, man. They just honored him on the ACC nice. Network. Yeah, probably yeah. should have won a few more, man. But I know my senior year, we let Donovan Mack through that throwback pass, man. And then ACC, yeah, and it, uh... 2011, they lost to Clemson. Um, they were going for back-to-back yeah. -back championships, man. Yeah. But Gentlemen, yeah. this has been a lot of fun. So we're at the end of the show. We're going to wrap up with this. This is, this is also a great part of the show where I give each of you, including myself, a chance to shout out anybody. You can shout out as the Hokie shout outs. You can shout out, you know, a, a teammate, a group of players. We, we try to keep it to one or two. Aaron Rouse went crazy and named almost everybody. Yeah, one player. So, no, it's one player. It's a one player. Yeah, so one it could be a player out. or it could be a coach. It could be an academic advisor. It could be, you know, somebody, as long as they're a Hokie, we want to show love. Um, and give them uh, some recognition. Just, you know, it could be somebody, you know, um, non-football player, just as long as they're hokey. So, John, um, I'll let you go. Um, who's your hokey shout-out? My hokey shout-out is to Coach Billy Height, the mm. first face That's, check. Uh, you got me with That's that, John. Nice. Right. My good dude, he, he was an anchor. He was an anchor to those, those, the, those coaching staffs. He's the one that had the majority of the players' respect. And behind the scenes, kept everybody in check, man. Because a lot of people, there was there was a potential coup at any day <laughs> in there. So, so yeah. but I thank yeah. thank him for coaching and, and you know just being a good good big brother. A lot yeah. of love. Hundred percent right. I I echo that. A hundred percent. Coach Height was the man. He was the man. He, Lord, he he was always there for me, always. But my shout out is <laughs> what I told you earlier. My man Jeffries. My man looked out for me, and I want to let him know I appreciate that. Good that's luck. What's up, man? John, that's what's really, up. Really, really, quick, really quick. Vaughn and I had our first born uh, two weeks apart. <laughs> wow. Wow. And yeah. we were we were going undergoing some some special pressure <laughs> becoming dads while we're playing during the season. Yes. Yeah. And some we yeah. stood shoulder to shoulder. And I was just, I just like, man, I'm, I'm getting ready to have, you know, we're getting ready to have a baby. And he's like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. You know how when you're young, man, something happened, you're thinking that's life or death. And now mm -hmm. I look back on it, you know, I got through Best it. Best thing to happen for you. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It, I, I had to get real, real quick. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah. seriously, Jeff, you my shout out, man. Like I said, he was Love my you, mentor. Man. <laughs> I, you know uh, that. I watched how he moved, and as you can see now, Jeffrey's always – he was always an old soul. So he always yeah. carried himself like the ultimate gentleman. And uh, that's – what you see now is – that was John back then. So no I doubt. wanted to let you know. No you. That's love. That's, that's, why that's what's up. Well, my, well, my shout-out going to be somebody somewhere near y'all class or might have been right before y'all class. Bruce Smith, man. I'm, oh. I'm going to shout-out Bruce, man. Bruce, yeah, uh, Bruce. from – from the 757, Bruce was the first NFL player I've ever seen as a kid. I was on a um, – we went to Hampton University to watch one of their games from the Boys and Girls Club. They had a big brother program. And I'm, uh, it's halftime, and I, I, me and some of the kids, was, we was out back playing, like, on the side of the stadium. And I see this nice pathfinder pull up, and uh, a big, tall dude got out of it. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, that look like Bruce Smith. I'm telling my homeboy, and he was like, yo, bro, that is Bruce. I was like, man, I'm going to call him. I said, Bruce. He turned around, waved. Oh, and uh, it, it changed my life, man, to see a guy from my area 
Um, and, and then he gave a speech afterwards, and I was kind of like enamored with him and uh, got to know him as I grew older, and he was a mentor and still a mentor to this day. So shout out to Bruce Smith. That's what's up. Yeah, man, the great Bruce Smith, man. And I just, I, I'll be quick. I got two shout outs. First of all, I want to shout John, you and Vaughn. I want to shout both y'all. Um, I want to say this, man, again, because of the platform and all the stuff I do with radio and television and the podcast, a lot of people looked at me, you know, Antonio Banks was saying, man, I always able to bring back the old Hokies and the new ones and the current ones, the guys I play with. But I can't thank you both enough for the what y'all did. John, I met you used to come back to tech, you know, showing your pearly white smiling, you know, talking, you're doing good, you're doing good. And you used to always show love to me and Sharon and a lot of us, man. So I appreciate you. Vaughn, as I, I wasn't joking. Like, I remember watching you play as a youngin. Like, I remember, you know, people look and say, oh, why'd you choose a school? You have your reasons, but, you know, you and, and Drakefoot and, and and Antonio Freeman and Crittenden, and it wasn't like it was a multitude of tech players in the league like it is now, where we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And you set the tone, and it's important to make sure, as they say now, give people their flowers. I appreciate you both. And that's why every now and then I want to get guys from y'all area in there so the fans that watch us now We'll be like, I never knew that. Like the fact y'all didn't have an OC and yet y'all out there, you know, basically playing tech mobile, putting up numbers. Oh, it you know, was, so <laughs> and I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And my other shout out, man, I just want to shout out, um, you know, uh, Coach Gentry, you know, just a guy that, um, that and Coach Gentry, yeah. you know, yes. I just think, you know, every time you talk to somebody during that era, they talk about how important the strength and conditioning program. It's one thing to be a goon. It's another thing to have that weight behind you. And we will, you know, Vaughn joke, but I know what he's talking about. Like, I used to tell people that were on the football team, if you mess with us, it was going to be a problem because we were built different. It was going to be a problem. And, um, you know, we didn't need to do anything but just look. So, um, Gentry, man, you know, he's still coaching now as far as strength and conditioning. Now we got uh, his protege at Tech, Jared Ferguson. So I wanted to shout him out, man, because there's so much more. And Beamer will tell you himself than just one guy. Guys like Beamer have to have people around him like Coach Height and Gentry to make that ship go about the way it's supposed to do. The same way, um, just for another show, when Mike talks about how when he got to Philly, Andy Reid was a genius. You see uh, Mahomes benefiting from that right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can't – you got to have great people around you, man. So we want to cool. take – thank you two guys as great people for jumping thank on, you, man. man. Appreciate you know, it. appreciate y'all both, man. And, um, you know, Vaughn, I'm going to be watching on Facebook. Good luck to your daughter. My <laughs> wife ran track. That is a tough sport, man. And uh, she's killing it, man. And I've, I'm, I'm praying for her health and safety. And, you know, Mike's down there. So, you know, y'all go yeah. back. <laughs> That's what's up, Mike. Yeah, yeah, man. I'll be, uh, yeah. I'm flying down tomorrow, man. Yeah. Flying down tomorrow. It's parents' no weekend. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. Well, everybody, wanna... man. Go ahead, go ahead, John. Go ahead, go ahead, John. Go ahead before I sign this uh, so, out. Go ahead. So... When I came back to tech, I had one class to finish. And my 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 second daughter was born during senior exam, so I had all incomplete. So I had to come back to tech. I ended up going to a sociology class and and participate in a program that I got a shout out to Dorita Dorita Radcliffe and, yes. and Jermaine. Uh, Dorita. <laughs> they, they 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 had a program that allowed players to, to come back and finish their degrees. And I came back and happened to be in the class with you, Mr. Vic. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so I, I drove up for two days a week and stayed in stayed in Blacksburg, went to class with you, and and then I went to practice. And you always talked about, I said, man, I got this cousin, man. And let me tell you something. He's going to be the greatest thing that could ever come out of Virginia Tech. We're riding in the car. You give me a ride back. He's the greatest. And so... I saw this cat with the um, with the with always wore a white beater and a white duvet. Am I accurate? Yes. I John, uh, he's yeah. always accurate. He got a damn photo. Like me, that's that memory, man. <laughs> Mike teased me, but, but yeah. Hey, speak on it, John, because I told everybody about Mike. I'm, I forgot it's I told so, you. He and so I went and watched the greatest team. In my opinion, not because of where they went. They practiced like we never practiced before. They practiced full speed, tackle to the ground. They were organized. I saw these guys out in the streets afterwards. They didn't drink. We were we were breaking. We were we were wrecking bars up. When we were there. They these guys were disciplined. 
I spent time with these guys, and he would just talk about Mike. So I was I'd be I'd always be around Mike, and I'd say what's up to him, and uh, and he was quiet, didn't know what to do. You know, you know people like in a fishbowl, but I would see him, and you talked about him, and I every week I would come back and I would watch and scrutinize it. So I ended up going to seven games that year, wow. and we, and all of us. I was in Boston College. When you went down to when Boston College, I was in the end zone when you came in that long run to, to the end zone. I was there. Oh yeah, the long run. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but I was there at all the games and all of us, and even the years before, we all lost our voices cheering for you guys. You guys made us fans. Yes, you did. Right. I was a yeah, fan, man. boy. No, I appreciate right. that, John. I forgot we had that class together, but now I remember not. I talked about Mike so much and I still talk about him because it's not because he's family. I'm proud of him. And I, I knew, and I do brag about this. I got a great memory and I tell people all the time, I love a good, I told you so my boy Aaron to tell you this. Cause I, once I see something, I'll be like, watch what happens. I, my boy, Lauren Johnson, he came up to me and said, Dwight, you prophesized my entire career right now. You said I was going to be one of the best coaches and win state championships. I said, I got an article in my house. I said, Mike is going to change the game. That's when I recruited him. I said, he's going to, you're going to be up for the Heisman. You're going to take us to a national championship game. And uh, I can get everything right. Except what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. Thank you, fellas. We appreciate y'all. Yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. man. Thank y'all. Go home. Go home. Great story. Go home. Great story. Back at it.